Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. Um, today is Sunday. It is May 7th. It's 1.20 in the afternoon. And we're not, we're not starting this vlog off very good, so I apologize. But um, I vlog everything in my life and I like to keep you guys updated. Jackal is sick. And we don't know what's wrong. I just got back from the vet. I'm so, I'm so grateful for where I work that my vet is able to see me on a Sunday. I'm so grateful so I was able to take him to work and have the vet look at him. So basically this all started last night, Saturday at around six o'clock. He ate his dinner at five o'clock, normal. He went outside and went potty, like normal, normal bowel movement, normal pee. At around six o'clock, so about an hour after dinner, he was sitting on the couch next to me and I noticed that he was shaking really bad, really, really bad, like quivering and shaking. Um, his eyes were kind of like, kind of like this a little bit, like he didn't want to open his eyes. Uh, he was acting very lethargic. He was just acting off. I mean, he is an older dog, so he is gonna do weird things, but this was like not normal than his usual old senile tendencies, if that makes sense. So at 6.30, I took his temperature and it was 102.8. And normal for a dog is between 101 to 102.5. So he did have a little bit of a low grade fever. Uh, I basically monitored, monitored him the rest of the night. He went to bed just fine. And then this morning, um, when I opened up his crate so he could go to the bathroom in the morning, usually he'll come right out of his crate and follow me downstairs and he's really excited. Um, he wouldn't come out of his crate, which is not like him at all. I had to get him out of his crate, like I had to physically pick him up. He doesn't seem to want to walk, he just seems very lethargic. Just We came back inside and that's when things started to get a little more concerning. He basically went and laid in his chair, which is what he's doing right now, I'll show you guys him in a second. Uh, he was laying in his chair and he started shaking again. Uh, he was kind of like, he had like, he almost looked like he was high. Like, I took a video on my phone, so I'll kind of show you guys. Just off, like not normal. So I started to get a little worried. He felt really hot. Like, I could almost, like, here's him, and I could almost put my hand here, and I could just feel heat radiating off him. So I was like, okay, this is bad. So I texted my boss, my vet, and she, you know, was asking me questions like, did he get into anything, which I don't think he has. Uh, is he painful? He didn't seem painful. Um, he was walking, you know, somewhat normal. So she decided to let me bring him in so she could look at him. So I brought him there, and this is another reason why I knew he was not feeling well, because he is very reactive to people, to other dogs, like he'll bite. Uh, he did not react to the vet at all. Like, he didn't growl, he didn't try to bite. He let her do everything, and that's not like him. He's not, he's, he's kind of a naughty dog. So the fact that he was just cool and calm the whole time, that was another red flag uh, that he wasn't feeling good. First thing we did was check his temperature, and his temperature, like when I checked it, was 102.8. When we took it at the vet's office, it was 104.8, uh, which is very, very high for a dog, uh, that's for a human too, but for a dog, that's like dangerously high. So we had a temperature of 104.8. Uh, then she looked at his pupils, like she turned the lights off and looked in his eyes, and his pupils were two totally different sizes. One was like pinned and one was like this, which suggests something possibly neurological. So he had the fever, the pupils two different sizes, and a slower heart rate, okay? 
that's concerning. I have absolutely no idea what caused this, what brought this on. We checked his blood glucose level. That was all normal. Uh, so we decided to give him some subcutaneous fluids and he started on antibiotics about an hour ago. And we also gave him an appetite stimulator. So right when we got home, I was able to give him a little bit of food, which he loved. He was very excited to eat, probably from the appetite stimulator. So he did eat and I did give him antibiotics. I have to give him more before, before bed tonight. And then uh, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna take him with me to work so he can get some blood work done. Uh, she said if he's improving, he doesn't need the blood work done, but I'm gonna take him in for blood work anyway, just because I'm, I'm just nervous. There's something going on, and I just wanna make sure that all the bases are covered. Yeah, that's, that's how my Sunday has started. Uh, not, not great, I'm, I'm concerned, and it's so funny how parent intuition is. Like, I, I know he's not a real child. I know he's not like my biological child, but he is, I consider him like my child, my fur child. And it's just so funny how like, you just know, you just know when something's wrong, right? And I just, I could feel it in my gut there was something wrong. Like I was talking to my boyfriend about it and he was like, oh, he'll be fine, he'll be, he'll be fine, he's just old. And I'm like, no, there is something fucking wrong with my dog. Like, <sighs> yeah, um, I'm just, I'm trying to stay calm about everything. He, he is literally gonna be 13 next month. So, I mean, he is, he is old. So I'm just, I'm trying to stay calm I'm trying not to think of the worst possible thing, but it is concerning. It's really concerning. Not a great weekend at all. It's, it sucks. It really sucks because like, I would take a bullet for this fucking dog. Like I love him so much. He's literally my entire world. So I'm trying not to think of like, you know, what could possibly happen. He doesn't seem to want to get up and move right now. He's sleeping right now. But when we were coming back inside uh, from the car, when we got back from the vet, he, he tripped a couple times because I have like a little step, like a little curb step to get up to my door and he kind of tripped on that. So, I mean, he's not, he doesn't have the greatest balance, but I'll go ahead and show you guys him right now. Hi, baby. Hi, honey. Is you not feeling good? Yeah. Yeah, this is really all he wants to do. He doesn't really want to do anything else. You okay, honey? You gonna be strong for mommy? Your eyes are a little more open now. That's good, right? Are you a good boy? Yeah. You're a good boy. And he doesn't look that good either. Like his color just seems off. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what could have caused it. Um, our other concern was it's, is it maybe his liver and gallbladder acting up again? Like, is he having issues again with all of that? Cause if you guys remember, about three years ago, he had to be hospitalized for a couple days for jaundice. Hopefully, I don't have to take him back to the vet tonight. Yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on that, but I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on. I'll talk to you guys in the next clip. Hey guys, it is 4.20, so it's a few hours later uh, with Jack. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. So ever since I turned the camera off last time, so the last clip, um, he literally has been sleeping the entire time. And then about 10 minutes ago, he woke up. He seemed pretty lively, like his normal self. Um, so I took him outside to go to the bathroom. He peed for like, oh my God, like two minutes straight because of all like the fluids that he got today and the um, water and his food and stuff like that. So he had a very nice long pee and then I just kind of let him walk around 
outside in the sun a little bit because he loves the sun. And he seemed to like that. I did notice he is a little bit, uh, he is stumbling a little bit. It's not like full on like drunk walking, but he'll be walking normally and then just kind of lose balance a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on that. I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep tonight, which sucks because I have work tomorrow. But, I, oh my God, I don't know. Uh, so he was stumbling a little bit. He needed a lot of encouragement and help to get over my little step. Like, he seemed to have a hard time with that. And now he's back to laying down. He was able to jump up there on his own, but now he just seems exhausted again. So that's just the update for right now. This one, this little troublemaker, kept trying to, like, play with him. So she would, like, run up to him and kind of, like, push him a little bit to, like, initiate play. That's just what she does. And I was like, eh, don't do that. Like, <laughs> don't try to play with him right now. So... I feel really bad because she wants attention and she wants to play with her brother really bad, but I just, I, we can't be doing that right now. So I'm sorry to like vlog this stuff because I feel like it's so fucking sad and depressing, but welcome to my life. <laughs> Hey guys, excuse the way I look. Uh, there has not been much sleep the last like almost two days. Uh, today is Tuesday. It is May 9th. It's currently about 1230 in the afternoon and um, I just wanted to give you guys an update on what the heck happened. So the last clip you saw, uh, I was at the emergency vet hospital with Jackal. I decided to take him in. He was okay. He wasn't great, but he was stable enough. Um, he basically slept, and then he ate his dinner, which was great. He got another round of antibiotics, and then soon after that, at around 8.30 Sunday night, uh, he started to, what I thought was declining, uh, he... His temperature spiked up again to 104.8. He was shaking. He was very, very lethargic. His eyes were really squinty. He wasn't responding to any stimuli. Like, I was snapping, you know, trying to get his attention. He just was not responding at all. He was just literally like this and just zoned out. Like, I could not get his attention. I tried messaging my vet his vet again, his regular vet, uh, but it was too late at that point and I didn't get a response so I just kind of sat there and I don't know just something in my gut was telling me that I have to do something, I have to take action because to me he just he didn't look good like at all. He was not good. My boyfriend was even concerned and when he's concerned about something like that just makes me even more concerned. So I phoned the emergency vet I explained everything, like what was going on, how I took him to the vet already, and they said that they wanted to see him. So I immediately <laughs> packed him up, got in the car, and drove to the emergency vet. We got there at about 10.15. They took him right away. We sat there for probably about four, a little more than four hours, and I have all of the stuff in here so I can tell you basically um, what went on. So they called me at about 2.30 in the morning. I had them do a full blood panel on him. I also had them do an ultrasound on his liver because if you guys remember in 2020 when he had that jaundice with the liver and gallbladder information, so I had them do like an ultrasound blood work, a full exam and things like that. Uh, they were able to get his temperature. You okay? Um, they were able to get his temperature back down to 101.3, which is awesome, which is totally normal. Um, dogs do run warmer than humans, and 101.3 is normal temperature for a dog. His heart rate was 120, respiratory rate was 35, which is good. They said his general appearance was quiet and dull. Uh, he did eventually become responsive to stimuli. He had no evidence of dehydration. Uh, everything on the outside looked good. All of his blood work was done and was found to be normal. 
the ultrasound that was done looked good. They said his gallbladder was too small to see on the ultrasound, but they said that's a good thing because if there was like an obstruction or an issue, the gallbladder would be really big. But they said that his liver appeared normal, everything on the ultrasound appeared normal. They sent me home with some meloxicam. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's basically a um, inflammation, pain, med, fever reducer, and they also sent us home with some Carpromelian, I think, which is an appetite simulator, and they basically just told us to keep up on the antibiotics that his regular vet gave him. So basically, we have no idea what the heck caused all of this. Uh, it's on a, it's a complete mystery. We weren't. It is really frustrating, you know, being at the emergency vet for like four and a half hours and not getting like a definitive answer. It is a little bit frustrating, so we don't know what exactly caused this, but I'm just glad that I trusted my gut and took him in because, I don't know, there, he just was not acting right at all. I didn't vlog basically at all that night because that just wasn't on my mind, obviously, but I am glad I took him in. We brought him home and we got home at about 4.30 in the morning and I went right to sleep because I had to work in a few hours. So I did work yesterday. I was absolutely exhausted. I literally only got like three hours of sleep. My boyfriend was here with him all day watching him and he's not 100% yet, but he does seem to be getting back to normal. And then today so far, he's been pretty good. He does have a little bit of a cough and last night, I, I didn't get much sleep last night either because at like around 4 a.m. Uh, I like woke right up because it sounded like he was like wheezing. Like he was like <gasps> like that and it scared the shit out of me. So I immediately got up and checked on him and then he just went right back to sleep and he was breathing normal again. I have no idea and now it seems like he has a little bit of a cough. But today so far he seems good. He's been pottying normal. Uh, he does not like his meds at all. He does not like taking his antibiotics. I mean, I don't blame him. I wouldn't either, but we've been keeping up on his meds. Yeah, that's just kind of the update. I don't know, you know, what to do next. I guess I'm just, basically what I have to do is just finish his meds, um, keep an eye on him, monitor him, and then just go from there. But I think probably the next steps I will take are probably some x-rays, maybe some more blood tests, and then potentially an MRI if it gets to that point. And I know he's older and it's probably not worth it to do some of this stuff. Like a lot of people would say, like a lot of people are like, he's old, like just let him go. Fuck no. <laughs> um, I am literally gonna fight to the death uh, to try to figure out what's going on and how I can make him better, but I spent a total of $721.35 at the emergency vet, and I'm actually pretty happy with that price because I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was expecting to drop like two grand that night because <laughs> with all the stuff they were doing, but it was only like a little over $700, so I was like, okay, I can do that, that's fine. Um, I didn't. I honestly didn't even care at that point. I just wanted him to get better. And I am glad I took him there because he did seem a lot better when we picked him up. So I was just very, very grateful for that. And today he woke up, he even jumped into bed with me this morning, which was so nice, it was so cute. And then we went and sat outside a little bit because it's really beautiful out. It was a very long night, it was very scary. I have never had to take my dog to the emergency vet before. It was, it was terrifying. Like, 10 out of 10, don't recommend. <laughs> Hi honey, you look better. How you feeling? Yeah, are you taking naps? Are you taking naps? Yeah, he looks a lot better today because, oh my gosh, if you guys could have seen him Sunday night, like, it was terrifying. It was, I've never seen him look like that before. It was awful. But yeah, I didn't sleep at all when we were at the emergency vet. Like, we were in my boyfriend's car, just sitting in his car, just waiting, and my boyfriend was like, you should probably try to get some sleep because you have to work, and I was like, I can't sleep. Like, there is no way on this earth I am sleeping while my dog is in there and I don't know what's going on. So I was very tired, and then last night I didn't sleep very good just because I was just nervous. So 
I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty worn out, in case you can't tell. Right now, my boyfriend is at the grocery store getting some stuff. I felt bad I didn't go with him, but I'm just not ready to leave him alone yet. Uh, I want to I wanna be with him, so I was like, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably vlog again here in a little bit. I just wanted to give you guys an update, so I'll talk to you in the next clip. Hey guys, uh, here to give you another update. I'm sorry if these are getting redundant and boring. It's bugging me. I look even more rough than last time I've been crying. Uh, basically, he took another downward spiral um, at about 4.30 today. Started exactly how it did Saturday night. Uh, he started shaking. He didn't want to open his eyes. And then when it came time to eat, he didn't want to eat. Uh, even with an appetite simulator, sorry, even with an appetite simulator, he still didn't want to eat. Uh, so I messaged my vet again. Uh, I went and picked up. Well, first I told my vet what was going on and she asked me what his temperature was. I took his temperature, told her everything that was going on. His temperature did climb back up. It is now 103. It was normal, now it's going back up. So his temperature is creeping back up and he's on two antibiotics, one of them being a fever reducer and it's still climbing back up. So she um, filled a prescription for methylcarbamol, methylcarbamol, sorry, uh, 500 milligrams. I have to give him one fourth of a tablet by mouth every eight hours. Uh, started him on that at about 6.30. Basically, that's like a muscle relaxant for many different things. So, yeah, he's not doing well. He's not eating. Uh, he has two different kinds of food here. He has urgent care AD and then his regular liver, liver food. I was able to feed him a little bit of this out of my hand. He would only eat out of my hand. But he did eat a tiny amount of this. Uh, he won't touch this. He's, my vet's going to look at him again on Thursday. In the meantime, I have to keep checking his temperature, give him lots of options for food to eat, and if his temperature gets to be around 105, then I have to take him back to the emergency vet. He's just getting comfortable right now. I don't know how long it takes for that medication to work, but he had it about about an hour ago, so. I, I, at first I thought it was some sort of like toxin poisoning, you know, from outside, like something in the lawn. But if that were the case, then why isn't Avril sick? Because they use the same yard, you know what I mean? I don't think it's that. He did not get into any medication or any other toxin inside my house. I am very anal and OCD about that. I always make sure that stuff is up and out of the way. So I don't think it's any sort of toxin poisoning. I don't know if it's some sort of like antibiotic resistant infection, viral infection. Uh, now I'm starting to wonder if it's something to do with his brain or his spine. I'm not really sure. We know it's not his liver because his liver blood levels and the ultrasound was all normal for that. So now it's something else. He did just go to the bathroom for the first time in hours. He hasn't even wanted to go to the bathroom, but he did go pee and poop. And I just have to make it through tonight, tomorrow, until I can get him in Thursday. I wanna, uh, I wanna try to avoid going to the ER as much as possible. But I mean, obviously, if I have to take him, I'll take him, you know? But I really wanna try to get him to make it to Thursday so he can see his regular vet, and we can try to do things there. He's on so many damn things right now. Amoxicillin, that metro other thing, <laughs> that other antibiotic. Uh, the appetite simulator, his regular ursidol for his liver, now he's on that muscle relaxant. So this poor dog is just getting pills and syringes and just everything right now. I feel so bad for him. And it sucks because like with dogs, you know, you can't just ask them what's wrong. They can't talk to you. Um, so, and not only that, but dogs are so good at hiding pain. Like, it's their instinct to try to hide pain and not look weak, so it's hard to tell if he's hurting. The only thing I know is that he's not right, he's not acting like himself, and he's not doing well again. That's the update for right now, and he, he had a good day today. Like, 
I was really starting to feel hopeful. You know, I was starting to feel good. I was like, oh good, like these meds are working. He had a really good day today. He even went and grabbed a toy today out of his toy box. Like he wanted to play. He wanted to be outside. He was walking around. He was barking at things out the window. <laughs> like doing all of his normal things. And now he, he's not. He's just... It's not right. So yeah, I'm probably gonna take a shower here soon because I am so tired and I just feel so gross all the time. Like I'm I'm just I'm a hot mess. Like it's disgusting. I did call off work tomorrow. I was supposed to work tomorrow, but I called off because I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen tonight. And I I'm 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 the kind of person who always looks at the negative side of things, but I'm trying not to be negative. I'm just trying to prepare. So if I do need to take him to the ER. I don't have to worry about sleeping or getting home and grooming dogs. I can be with my dog and I'm not, I don't have anyone here tomorrow while I'm at work and I'm not comfortable leaving him, leaving him here by himself alone. You know what I mean? I just, I just need to be with him. I'm not doing well with this and I know he's not doing well, but I'm just trying to be there and be strong for him basically. This sucks. And I was like, crying, bawling my eyes out earlier because I'm so afraid it's going to be something that he can't pull out of because that's like the negative side of my brain going into overdrive. I always think the negative. So I started thinking like, oh my god, what if it's, you know, a dis an incurable disease? What if it's the C word? Like, and I just started crying because I don't know what to do. You know, he's on all these different meds and none of them seem to be doing anything. Like what is going on? Like why, why don't I have answers? Why can't I help him? Am I doing everything right? Like just questioning myself constantly. So it just sucks. I'm in full, I'm in full mother mode right now. I'm gonna go take care of myself. I'm gonna go take a shower and just try to relax and just keep an eye on him, basically. So I'll vlog more when I know more or if something else exciting happens, but yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next clip. Good boy. Good boy. Did he get any? Oh yeah, he did. All right, you're all done until 2.30 this morning, okay? Or tomorrow morning. I gotta wake up at 2.30 and give him another one of those muscle relaxants. Okay, you ready, buddy? I don't know if he's having like... Almost done. Good boy. Good. Just the end. It's going down. It's gone down a little bit. It was 103.2 last time, so that's good. Boy, Chuckleberry. Did you at the doctor? Yeah. Yeah. Good boy. Nope. Hey guys, uh, here to give you another update on Jackal. Today is May 11th. It is Thursday. It's about almost three o'clock in the afternoon. As you guys just saw, we were just at the vet again. We were there for about 40 minutes. So thankfully he has gone a full 24 hours without a fever, which is great. He had a normal temperature of 100.4 in the vet's office. My vet also looked at him with the ultrasound machine again and everything with his liver and gallbladder again looked normal. We're gonna try a whole new different route of things. So we took some urine and blood from him. So we're gonna do a urinalysis and the blood that we took it is going to go and get searched for antibiotic resistant infections, something like that. So it's gonna test for 
you know, different stuff than what he's already been tested for. Since he has not really been eating or drinking, we gave him some more, we gave him 100 milliliters of subcutaneous fluids just to make sure that he stays hydrated because he's just not doing that himself very well. And we are gonna try a whole different route of medications. All the medications that he was on before weren't getting through the brain blood barrier. And so we're gonna try different medications that do break through that brain blood barrier. So that way if there is something going on in the brain, if there's an infection or something, the meds will kind of attack that. So I stopped the amoxicillin and I also stopped the meloxicam and we're gonna start him on doxycycline and Slindicure. He gets both of these twice a day, every 12 hours. We're also gonna keep him on the methylcargamol, which is that muscle relaxant. We're gonna keep him on that. And then on Monday, once his system flushes out all of the meloxicam, we're gonna start him on a steroid, the prednisone, we're gonna start him on that. So we're gonna try all these different medications and then I'm gonna wait and see what the blood results come back as. I'm really anxious to see if it's gonna come back with anything because, oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm a wreck. He's still on a bunch of medications. He did have a much better morning. Uh, this morning he woke up and he really wanted to go for a walk. So we took him for a little bit of a walk and that went good. Uh, he did really well at the vet again. He was very, very well behaved for having blood taken, having urine taken, uh, fluids, an ultrasound, an exam. He had literally everything done there today. I did bring up something about x-rays, but they didn't say if that was needed. So, so he hasn't had any x-rays. So we're gonna try these rounds of medications and then if these don't work, it's probably time to start looking at possible neurology, finding a neurologist and getting a spinal tap or an MRI, which I swallowed a big lump in my throat when she said that because that is probably around six grand for an MRI and a spinal tap. Uh, that's a little concerning to me. I don't just have that money laying around and I don't think I would approve for care credit or anything. So. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now. But uh, she said something about like, you know, meningitis. As of right now, there is no diagnosis yet for any of this. Uh, we're just trying different things before we have to take more drastic measures. The thing is, can I afford those drastic measures? And also another thing is he's 13 years old. Can he even handle these procedures? And if, if he did and we find out a diagnosis, is he even strong enough to go through treatment? with whatever diagnosis that is. So it's just a lot of really confusing, unanswered questions. It's basically just experimenting at this point. He's still not really interested in eating. So I actually went to the store after the vet and I picked up a few of these little Caesar dinners. When Jackal was younger, he absolutely loved these as like a little treat. So I got a bunch of flavors of these. Um, hoping maybe he will remember and maybe we'll eat this. I'm just letting him eat whatever at this point. He is taking treats and he is like begging for human food, but he won't eat his actual food if that makes sense. So I just got these to try it, see if he'll want to eat a little bit of it. I don't know if he will. Sorry this video is so incredibly long already and there aren't any answers, but uh, I will update you guys again once I get the blood results back, which I don't know when that's gonna be. It could be tomorrow, it could be a few days, it could be a week, I really don't know. But uh, that's what's going on, that's what happened at the vet, uh, and I'll just keep you guys updated. But I'm gonna see if maybe he wants to eat. He really likes this flame and yawn flavor, so we'll see if he'll eat a little bit of this. Would you like a treat? What do I have? What do I have, Jacoby? You want some? Here you go. You want some more? Is that good? Yay! Good boy! 
Good job. Good boy. Is that yummy? He's eating, guys. He likes it. Yeah. Good boy. Oh my gosh, this is the most he's been eating in days. Good job! That was good boy! Yeah! Oh my god, he ate. He actually ate. I am so freaking happy right now. Oh my gosh. This is how you know you have a sick pet because I literally had to print out a calendar for the month of May and I had to start writing down all of his medications for the rest of the month. I'm still not done, I still have to fill in a couple more here. This is my life with a sick dog. I literally have to make a calendar with all his medications on it. So we only have to do his antibiotics tonight in about 45 minutes and then methyl carb at 2.30 in the morning and we start all over again. This poor guy also has a little bruise on his tummy. They had to take some urine and stuff, so they had to get into his bladder from over here, and it left quite a gnarly bruise, so they told me this would happen, that he would bruise really bad, but... oh, my poor guy. I know, sweetheart. But the good news is, is today is Friday. It is May 12th, and he has gone almost 48 hours without a fever. I took it when I got home from work and it was 100.4, so we're doing good. We're doing good. He still doesn't want to eat, but I'm gonna assume that's because of all the antibiotics that he's on, because sometimes antibiotics can give you like a loss of appetite, so I'm gonna go off that. I'm gonna ask my vet about it. Um, he ate a little bit today, but not, not much, not his usual, so I'm assuming it's from the antibiotics that are making him not want to eat, but who knows. Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to stop on here and update you guys on Jackal. So today is Tuesday, it is May 16th, May 16th, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. And I officially have all of his test results and I just wanted to kind of go over them a little bit. So basically what these test results are is since he had a really high fever and since the amoxicillin wasn't working on him and he wasn't really improving, me and my vet decided to do what is called a fever of unknown origin blood test. So basically they take some blood and they test it for all these different diseases that um, aren't really distinguishable on a normal blood test and it kind of finds the cause of like what's causing the fever, what possible illness or disease he could have. And I was really, really anxious waiting for these results because I didn't know what they were going to say. At the at one, one side of me was like, you know, I hope they don't find anything and I hope, you know, everything is negative. And the other side of me was like, well, I kind of want them to find something so we can figure out the cause of this, basically. And I got them back yesterday while I was at work. Um, they walked in with a piece of paper and I was like really anxious and really nervous to figure out what the heck this was. And I got them back and basically they tested for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 different possible illnesses or diseases of the fever of unknown origin and he tested negative in every single one. So that is a good thing. They didn't find any mysterious illness, disease in his blood, um, but that also means we still don't know what the heck caused this. So Jackal is all completely negative for everything, which is great, but also we still don't know what the heck it is. We still have absolutely no answers as to why he was so sick. Give you guys an update on how he is doing now. Um, Jackal baby! Jackal! Come here, honey! Come here! Come here! Hi! So here's Jackal right now. He is doing 
much better. Um, he's not 100% yet, but he is doing so much better. He's not um, running a fever anymore. His fever has been between 100.4 to 101.4, which is perfectly normal. Um, he has been walking normally. He's not stumbling when he walks anymore. That was incredibly concerning because like he would just be standing there, you know, and he would just kind of fall over. He's not doing that anymore. He seems to be a little bit more energetic, not as lethargic. So he is doing better in that sense. Come here. Come here. Yeah, everybody wants to see you. Yeah. This round of medications that my vet gave me seemed to be doing the trick because before he was on amoxicillin, uh, just amoxicillin, and he was continuing to have fevers and was continuing to be sick. So ever since starting him on doxycycline, Slindicure, I think, prednisone, uh, methylcarbamol. He seems to be doing much better on those. So he is on one, two, three, four, five. He's on five different medications right now. So literally, I spend my day just giving my dog medic medicine, but it seems to be working and he seems to be getting better. Um, the only other issue that I'm kind of struggling with with him is I'm kind of having a hard time getting him to eat. He does, like, he wants to eat, but he just doesn't really have, like, he doesn't want to eat, if that makes sense. Like, now, Jackal does have a history with liver issues, with jaundice, with liver and gallbladder inflammation. He had that back in 2020 where he was hospitalized. So he is now, ever since then, he's been on a liver care diet. So he has to be on a special food. He also takes a medication every single day for his liver. And he just doesn't seem to want to eat his liver food diet, which has been kind of frustrating because I can't have him not eat it and have his liver go bad again. But what I noticed is he really liked those Caesar dinner meals. And I noticed that is the only thing that he is willingly able to eat and he will eat that. So I messaged my vet yesterday and I told her, I said, hey, like, you know, he is feeling better, but he doesn't want to eat his healthy food. He only wants to eat Caesar dinners, which I'm just going to be honest, you guys, those Caesar dinners are not the healthiest thing to be feeding your dog. Like back in the day, I would just give it to him for like a treat every once in a while. Um, but now that's all he'll eat. So I messaged my vet and I asked her, you know, is, is this okay for him to eat for now until he kind of gets over this and get him back on his food? And she said, yes, I'd rather have him eat something rather than nothing. But she instructed me to keep mixing in his liver food in with the Caesar dinner. So he's at least getting some liver support from that food. So we are doing that. Uh, some days he will eat his meals all the way through and other days he'll just kind of graze and eat a little bit at a time. The other issue we had is he was pretty constipated. He wasn't, he, he gosh, I think he went like th three, almost four days without taking a poop, which is not good. Um, so he was a little backed up, but I've been doing the Fortiflora probiotic in his food and 100% pure pumpkin, and that seemed to do the trick. So we are getting him back on a regular poop cycle. Yeah, as far as like the food, we're still trying to get that. So I just had to go pick up some more of those Caesar dinners because that's the only thing he really seems to want to eat. Uh, even when I give him his pills, I have to wrap them in cheese because he won't even take a pill pocket anymore. So he's just being, he's just being very picky and very stubborn when it comes to his food right now, which isn't really like him because he is a big foodie. Like he will eat anything. Um, that's just how he's always been. So yeah, we are, we are stable right now. We are doing okay. Uh, he started his steroid yesterday, so he's going to be on that for the next couple of weeks. And his antibiotics, I learned yesterday that he is actually going to be on his doxycycline and Slinda, Slindicure. I think that's how, I think that's what it's called. He's actually going to be on that for another two weeks. My vet wants to do three full weeks of those antibiotics. So we're just going to keep up on that. He absolutely hates it. His hair is like all gumpy from like just the medicine getting on him. So I'm going to have to wipe him down with a wet washcloth. But So he is doing much better. He is much, he's stable now, which is great.
He seems to have a lot more energy. He seems like he wants to go for WALKs, which is great. But as far as like what this is and what caused this, we still don't know. And I was hoping that we would get some answers in this vlog, but we still just don't know um, basically what the heck to do. Sorry, it literally looked like someone was about to hit my car. So yeah, that is the little update. Um, he's doing better. Not 100%, but we're getting there. I think, you know, all the meds that he's on is making him a little, a little bit off. Even though they're helping, I just feel like he's taking so many meds right now that he just feels kind of bogged down. And I think those antibiotics can cause um, constipation and lack of appetite. So that could be another reason. Probably after he's done with all of the antibiotics, he'll go in for another checkup. So far, I think I've spent, I think I'm close to $1,500 <laughs> with trying to figure out what this is and we still don't have answers, but that is okay. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna keep fighting to figure out what this is and how we can prevent it in the future. And basically the plan of action now is to finish off his meds, keep him on his meds, and then once his medicine is done, if he goes back to normal, then we're in the clear. But if he stops his meds and this starts up again, whatever this is, the next thing I have to do is start looking for a neurologist for a dog. So he'd probably have to go in for an MRI and a spinal tap, which is kind of scary to think about because he is older and that just seems like a lot to put an older dog through. And that's also really expensive because I think MRIs for dogs range from about two to four thousand and a spinal tap is around a thousand. So I'd be looking at about six grand that I'd have to spend to try to get him better, which is completely worth it to me. I have been this whole week, over a week now because it's Tuesday and this all started on May 6th. Um, this whole last week and a half has been so so grueling, um, so scary, so awful, but I have been doing a pretty damn good job, you know, taking care of him, getting his meds, keeping an eye on him, writing things down, putting it on the calendar, monitoring his symptoms, taking his temperature, and Jackal has been, he's been such a champ through this whole thing, like, you know, he lets me check his temperature, he does take his meds, even though he absolutely hates them, so, he has been such a good boy. He's been such a champ through this whole thing. And I did go back to work. I only took that one day off work. Um, so I am going to work again regularly and just keeping an eye on him and having people watch him throughout the day and giving him his afternoon medications and things like that. So that's probably where I'm gonna end this vlog. I am going to be starting another vlog right away after this just like my regular vlogs not just a vlog all about him it's going to be like my regular vlogs and in that vlog I will continue to give updates periodically in that one this one is all just a vlog all about him and what happened with him I know that might be boring or redundant to some of you especially since most of this vlog has just been me talking about my dog but uh, I know that you guys grew up with me on YouTube but you also grew up with him. I have had Jackal for most of my adult life. I got Jackal when I was 19 which was 11 years ago. He came into my life in June of 2012 and we are now May of 2023 so you guys grew up with me on YouTube, but you guys also grew up with Jackal on YouTube. You, I know you guys love Jackal so much. You know, this dog is my literal, literal world, my heart and soul. And I just wanted to make a full dedicated vlog as to what's happening, what's going on. If any of your dogs have ever had to go through anything like this, if you ever found a cause for what this is or anything like that, please let me know. If your dogs have ever had to have an MRI or a spinal tap, let me know that as well. But please continue to send good thoughts and prayers to Jackal because he still does need them. Like I said, he's not 100% yet, but we're definitely getting there uh, slowly but surely. So that is a good thing. So just keep Keep the good thoughts coming to my boy, and thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it's been so stressful, at least for me it's been stressful, but hopefully you guys enjoyed, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but thank you for watching and showing your support for me and my boy. I 
truly don't know what I would do without him or you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Like I said, any future information or updates will be in my next regular vlog. But until then, I will see you guys very soon in my next one. Right, buddy? Yeah. Good boy. Can you say hi? Can you say hi, big baby? Yeah, you're looking out the window? Yeah, look at all the cars, huh? Yeah. That's a good boy. Mm. All right, love you guys. Bye.